This is Mr. Weinkoff speaking with Embrace Tutoring and Educational Services, and for this video, we're going to be going into the detailed explanations of the SAT Math Practice Test 8, Math Section 3, questions 11 through 12. 11 states, which of the following could be the equation of the graph above? Here I see my graph, I see my y, I see my x-axis, here I see the, the graph or the function. And what I'm attempting to figure out is that, well, if I were to figure out what is, right, when y equals zero, what is x, or what are the values of x, right? And it looks as though here it's two, right, when y equals zero. Here it's zero, but it's going in kind of a, a parabola form. And you can usually denote that with a with an x squared within your function, which it might lean more towards b or d. And then here I see that when y equals zero, x equals negative three. So I'm looking for something with a two, a negative three, and an x squared when I'm evaluating these. And it is b, because if I were to simplify this, this x minus two would become right x equals positive two. And this x plus 3, when simplified, would be the x equals the negative 3. So when y equals 0, you would have your x squared, your, your x equals positive 2, and your x equals positive 3. So, or x equals negative 3. So 11 is going to be b. Question 12, if 2a over b equals 1 half, what is the value of b over a? I'm trying to think of how these relate. Well, these are kind of flipped. And it says, what is the value of b over a? Well, let me do some cross multiplication. So if 2 over b equals 1 over 2, well, then if I were to multiply both sides by the other, then this would become 2 times 2a equals 1 times b. And this becomes 4a equals 1b. And I want to solve for b over a. So I'm going to divide both sides a. Here, right? I'm going to divide both sides by a. So I end up getting my b over a here, but I also end up getting 4. So they should be equal to 4, and 12 should be d. 13 states, the oil and gas production in a certain area dropped from 4 million barrels in 2000 to 1.9 million barrels in 2013. The first hint I have is that the fact that they're dropped uh, it's going from 1.9 to 4 million. Assuming that the oil and gas production decreased at a constant rate, which of the following linear functions f best models the production in millions of barrels t years after 2000? So after 2000, meaning going to 2013, and they are attempting to figure out, well, what is, what is the negative production, right, or the, the negative slope in this case? Well, let's say here that my, my y2 is 4 million and my, my y1 was 1.9 or, or somewhere. And then I'm over my, my 2,000, right, which would be here, right, my 2,000, which would be the initial. And I'm going to do my minus 2,013, which is going to be 13. Relative is going to be 2.1, so 4 minus uh, 1.9 equals 2.1, 2000 minus 2013 is going to be negative 13, which is good because it should be negative given the fact that it dropped, right? You should have a negative or decreasing rate. Now, I can tell that this 2.1 and this negative 13 is not related or do, well, better yet, it's, it's not identical to anything that I see here, but it is related. If I were to take both of these and if I were to multiply them by 10, Right. If I if I took this, if I if I took this entire expression and multiplied it by ten, then I would actually get my negative here, and I would get twenty one over one thirty. So C is going to be my best possible answer. Question fourteen is asking how many solutions are there to the system of equations above, and that means that what does x and y what are they both capable of equaling uh, simultaneously? which means I want to get both of these expressions to be the y equals form, so that way I have a relative, a more honest sense of comparison. Well, the top one here is already in y equals x squared plus 3x minus 7. The bottom is y minus 5x plus 8 equals 0. But if I were to change this to y equals, and this would be positive 5x minus 8, if I were to just flip this side, 
and for for both of the expressions. And now I have my 5x minus 8 could be equal to x squared plus 3x minus 7. And I want to solve for both of these expressions. So it, essentially I'm trying to say y equals y and on my left side I'm going to do my 5x minus 8 and then on my right side I'm going to do my other y which is the x squared plus 3x minus 7. I'm now going to simplify and I'm going to attempt to solve for my x and getting it by itself. So here I have 5x minus 5x, I'm going to get rid of that. And then here I have my 3x minus my 5x, which is going to be my minus 2x. I have a minus 8, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So add 8 and add 8 and this is going to cancel and now I'm going to have my positive 1 so I should have 2x or minus 2x positive 1 I'm going to bring my x squared down so here I have my x squared minus 2x plus 1 what can I do with this knowing that it's equal if I were to factor this for the x squared minus 2x plus 1 I would then get knowing this is a negative and this is a positive and my last values multiplied by each other would be the positive value then I would have a minus one, and here I'd have a minus one, and this would be x and x, right? x times x would give me x squared, and then x times negative one gives me negative one x, and then x times negative one gives me another, right, minus one x, then negative one times negative one gives me positive one, that's where I'm getting this uh, ability to factor from. And now, so here I have x minus one squared, and my x minus one squared could, right, equaling zero means that this could be x equals positive one, right? That is a possible value. Given the fact that it is one possible value, well, I'm gonna have exactly one solution. I 15 says the functions g and h are defined above, what is the value of h of zero? Meaning that when x is zero, what is the value of h overall, right? What is the value of h of zero what will you get when you plug in the x to this value and I see here that h of zero taking this expression as function is going to equal one minus well g of zero and my g of zero I'm going to get from my other expression which is my and I'll write it down here that way I have room so my g of zero equals my two times zero minus one well this will equal negative one so my g of zero equals negative one, I'm gonna plug this in here. So my h of zero is going to equal one minus negative one, which would actually turn into one plus one, which would give me two. So h of zero is going to equal two overall, therefore making 15d. 15 states x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero. If a is a solution to the equation above and a is greater than zero, what is the value of a? Well, here I have an equation and it seems as though that I can factor this. So if I have my x squared plus my x minus 12, I can factor this. I'm gonna look for a larger positive term and both of those terms multiplied together is gonna to give me a negative 12. So what I mean by this is that when I FOIL this thinking backwards, x times x gives me x squared, well I want a larger positive term and I want both of those terms when multiplied together to give me negative 12. Most likely it will be positive 4 and then minus 3 because when added together they're going to give me a positive 1. Now if I, if I work backwards I will get my first here times the first I will get x squared and then x times my negative 3 would be minus 3x and then here I would get four times x, which would be positive four x, and then finally four times the negative three, which is where I'm getting the negative 12 from. So these like terms combined would end up being positive 12. So this does work. I know that it's possible to do x plus four, and I know it's also possible to do x minus three when I factor them. Now, when I simplify this, this would then make x equal to negative four, and this would make x equal to positive 3 when sending this equal to 0, meaning that if a is greater than 0, then x must be 3. So 3 is the answer choice that you will bubble in for question 16. Question 17 says the sum of negative 2x squared plus x plus 31 and 3x squared plus 7x minus 8. So the sum of these added together 
can be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. What is the value of a, b, and c? So you're simply combining these terms, you're solving for like terms, you're, and then you're arbitrarily defining a, b, and c, and you're adding those together. So negative 2 plus 3 is going to give me 1x squared. And here I have my 1x plus my 7x, so that will give me my 8x overall. And this thus far is a, this is b of how we're defining these. And then my 31 minus my negative 8 will give me positive 23 altogether. This would be my c. Now I'm adding my 23 plus my 8 plus my 1, so my 9 plus 23 should be... 32 altogether. And once again, that's because I'm trying to solve my a plus my b plus my c. I'm attempting to solve what is the value of a plus b plus c, which would give you 32. So 32 is the answer to 17. 18 states, if x, y satisfies the system of equations above, what is the value of y? Well, then I want to eliminate x and I want to solve for my y. And I want to attempt to do substitution because it will take too long. Here I have negative x plus y. Well, actually, they, they sort of laid it out for you because if you want to eliminate x, the only thing you have to do is really just add the equations together. And because 1 is already a negative x, 1 is a positive x. And here's a, a y and a 3y. So without overthinking this, I'm going to add these equations together. And my minus x plus my x, well, these would cancel. I would then get my 4y equals my negative 3.5 plus my 9.5, or you can look at it as 9.5 minus 3.5, and that would be 6. So dividing both sides by 4, my y would be 6 over 4, which would end up giving me 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 is my answer for question number 18. Question 19 says, a startup company opened with eight employees. The company's growth plan assumes that two new employees will be hired. So two new employees will be hired each quarter every three months for the first five years. If an equation is written in the form of y equals ax plus b, so let's say my y equals my ax plus b, a would be my, my rate or slope, my b would generally be my intercept or what I start with, if an equation is written in this form to, re to represent the number of employees Y employed by the company X quarters after the company opened, what is the value of B? Okay, now, you could certainly kind of keep going and trying to figure out what all the different rates are and how many. So let's say we had, okay, I wanted to explore how many um, within years. Well, then I know that there's 60 months. Right, you can you can take this avenue and you can just keep going. Well, 60 months and there's three quarters and uh, three months in each quarter, so then I have 20 quarters. But all of that really isn't necessary. Really, what you need to be aware of is what is b when y when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, right, y equals b. And you're thinking to yourself, well, what does B signify in this equation? And B, 9 out of 10 times, is really going to be your initial amount. It's really where you're starting in some capacity. And you started, you opened the company with eight employees. They're talking about growing at a, at a certain rate of how often they do that. Those rates will be connected to the A and within the X. But the initial is going to be here within the B. Because assuming they, they legitimately do not hire anybody else, meaning that if they do not hire anyone else for the next however many years, then that would be zero. And then you just you remain exactly with what you, what you started with. So Y would equal 8 in this instance, or B would equal 8 in this instance. So 8 is the answer to number 19. Question 20, I see here that I have a figure, I have an arc, I have an angle, I have BAC, which is the angle X. It says in the circle above, point A is the center and the length of arc BC is two-fifths of the circumference. So two-fifths is actually uh, very important because this tells me that two out of the entire two segments out of the entire five segments is dedicated to BC, but five is the total. So five, if, if you were to cut this up into five 
various slices or segments, you would see that five is gonna be the total and two out of that five is what BC occupies. So two out of the five segments is what length or arc BC occupies, which will most likely correspond to an angle. So, and length of arc BC is two fifths of the circumference. What is the value of X? Well, how do we solve for this? Knowing that two fifths and BC is really the, the two here over the five, well, what else do you know represents the entire whole of the circumference, right? Or the entire circle it, relative to degrees because we're really trying to figure out what is X, right? What is the relative to degrees? And we know that 360 degrees equals the entire, right? The sum of, of the entire circle. So here's 360 degrees and here's my X. The reason why X is on the top of the fraction is because it's referring to BC. The entire circle right, being the fact that it's the five or the total or the 360 degrees is being represented as my denominator. I can use this proportion to cross multiply. Set up this proportion and cross multiply, I'm gonna end up getting 360 times two equals five times x. And my 360 times two, right, in order to solve and isolate for x, I'm gonna divide both sides then by five. And here I have 360 times two divided by five will give me x. I can approximate knowing that this is without the calculator section in order to simplify. What I mean by that is that the 360 divided by five here, I would actually break down. I know that it's gonna means that it's going to be 72 and it's gonna be 72 times two, which would give me 144 degrees uh, as of estimating.